Question is from Shelby Jutton. What advice would you give someone who has consistently been training six days a week? I'm scared to back off in fear of losing progress or regaining fat because I'm not as active. Yeah, here's the the fascinating case of doing less is more. And you see this often with people who tend to push too much. Yep. I've had so many people I've trained where they're in this situation, they're working out six days a week or seven days a week, and they're doing too much, and we scale them back. And rather than gaining body fat and losing muscle, the opposite happens. They build muscle because what they were doing before was too much. And then as they build the muscle, because their muscle is burning more calories, they have a faster metabolism, mm -hmm. they actually get leaner. So I know progressive resistance and progressive overload and adding volume, those are all part of building muscle. But at some point, you get diminishing returns. And sometimes you're doing too much. Doing less oftentimes can produce better results. I liked sort of the basic idea of if you took like a week vacation and you didn't train or do anything and then you come back and you feel like the most energy, the most strength you've had in a long time, you know, as sort of a bit of a gauge of, wow, I, I guess, you know, that was probably yep. a bit more of demand than I realized I was placing on my body. But you just got to kind of, you know, take a leap of faith and, and try it out. If, if that's something you're considering and try kind of scaling back for a while, you'll know, like your body's going to kind of, uh, you know, reveal that to you. So uh, I dealt with this a lot, uh, especially with competitors. Um, this was common. I, I get a hold of a competitor and many times I would assess their eating and training and many times they were over training and I had to scale them back from six to seven days a week to like a MAPS anabolic type of program. And this exact would be the concern. This was, they're freaking out like, oh my God, I trained six, seven days a week. You're going to cut that in half. Uh, am I going to put on all this body fat? One of the one of the strategies that I used to use to help mitigate that, or the potential of that happening, is I would just replace the days that they, the other three days that they're no longer lifting more with activity, walking, mobility. That way, the the calorie expenditure is still up there, but the training volume is being changed. Also, mm -hmm. mentally for them, they're doing right something. exactly. They're still doing something. So, I, what I'd say to that that client, I'd say, listen, you don't have to stop going to the gym. Go to the gym. Still go your six days, your seven. If you like that, that's part of your routine. Um, I, I respect that and I understand, like, do it. Like, I, li I like that you've made that a part of your lifestyle. But now what I'm asking you to do is now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I want it to be all mobility and walking on the treadmill for that hour. And so that's, and then they're also getting some calorie expenditure there. So, because if you take somebody who's going six days a week, training very hard, high volume, and you cut them to three, there's definitely going to be a difference in yeah, they're, calorie. They're a busy person with a busy mindset. So right. you got to make that productive. And they're still. also, yeah. their body's also adapted to a pretty high calorie burn. And if you don't adjust the, the calories for that difference, then there is a potential that they will put on a little bit of body fat after that. One of the ways, like I said, to mitigate that is to keeping the activity level still up there, but you're changing the type of activity. You're scaling back the intense high volume training that they were doing to give them something that their body's probably going to respond better to, like a three day a week mm -hmm. anabolic type of full body routine. Mm -hmm. But then you're also allowing them to still move and have activity. So there's not such a discrepancy in the calorie. Yeah, but sometimes there's a paradox that happens, right? Mm -hmm. So some, and this, I've had this happen happen many times where somebody's working out six days a week. It's too much. I cut them down to three days a week of resistance training. So they're doing less activity, but because the three days a week built more muscle on their body. Well, I'll explain that paradox. You know that the, who that client is, is the client who also under eats. So they're, they're not, they're also, they're over training and they're under eating. They so the, hand hand so just them. by cutting the days, now their calories are probably about where they should be. And the less activity is actually extremely beneficial because now they're recovering better right now and they're building more muscle. Which then results in getting leaner. So yeah, absolutely. So th that is a, that's a very common paradox that happens. And as a coach, that's what you're looking for. So when I'm assessing the diet and the training, I'm looking at, is this person just, tr I think, training too much? Uh, but they have a good a good hold of uh, getting enough nutrition and they're eating a good amount of calories, or are they overtraining and under eating? If they're overtraining and under eating, then that advice is the advice I give. We drop down to two or three days a week of, of weight training, and I'm not even worried about activity the rest of the time. But if I know that you're eating a good amount of calories, you're feeding the body really well, you got a good calorie intake, say if this is a female that's asking, say she's eating, I looked at her, her profile real quick too, let's pretend she's eating somewhere between 2,400 and 2,800 calories a day, and she's just training six days a week, I might just 
modify that. But if she was eating 1,500 calories, really, really low, and overtraining, I may not ask her to do the extra activity. I might just say, you know what you need to do? You need to right. scale back on that let's volume. Put the brakes on. Yeah, let's scale that back and actually not do any extra activity. And then I'd actually want her to increase calories. And then I, if I do any move, that's when I'll start doing movement yeah, to you know, kind of counter that. You know what's interesting, mm -hmm. too, about this is if you were to take just the average person, a majority of the average people – uh, would build more muscle and get better results working out three days a week than six days a week. Just yeah. it just that's just uh, statistically, I would say that's a hundred percent true. Just an adequate recovery focus. Yeah, most way. most people would do better with that. The people that do well six days a week uh, have first of all the programming has to be really really good because it's a lot of exercise, and they have to they typically are, are have been working out for a while. They're relatively advanced. They've got new, good nutrition. They got a good hold of things. They're not the average person. They tend to be much a little bit more advanced. But the average person, I mean, I wouldn't take the average person who wants to build muscle and have them train six days a week. Usually I'm doing a good three-day-a-week routine. I mean, shit, when Doug hired me as a coach, uh, he had exercise experience. I, he was lifting twice a week. It was two days a week that he started. And he did two days a week for a year before we moved up to three days a week. Um, and now, he, of course, he follows our programs and he'll train upwards of four or five, six days a week. But it took a while, so... The, here's the thing with exercise. Uh, the right dose is going to get you the best results, and the right dose is individualized. The more than that or less than that will get you there slower. So always remember that.